Hello, everyone, and uh, a very warm welcome to you. Eris and several others who have joined us from around the world, especially from Canada and the US. Mary is here in the UK. We welcome you all. We are happy that um, you are doing well in the places where you are and you have fun time to join us uh, in the context of Nigeria this evening, but for those of you in the US and Canada this afternoon. You already know me, I'm Dr. Peter Guduro. Um, it has been my pleasure to have worked with you right from the time you were desiring to find their way out of the country in search of opportunities to develop your talents, your gifts to the advantage of yourself, your family and humanity. And I'm glad that you are making effort uh, towards actually actualizing your dreams. And uh, I'm delighted to know that indeed, all of you are making us proud by the way you are excelling in your academic work and also contributing to the welfare of the communities that you belong to. And you have continued to lead. And of course, on a general note, also excel the things that you do. So thank you for finding time to join us. And the, the way we are going to go about it at this hour will be to uh, permit you to do short introductions. Let us know where you're joining us from. And then, of course, when you mention your name, you tell us the university and the city and state uh, where you have joined us from. And later we go back. And of course, also include what you're studying. So your name, the university where you are or where you recently finished from, or the college where you are doing your program or the one you are heading for. And of course, tell us what you're studying. And later we'll get back to you and find out how you're faring. And if there are challenges, you share with us and also help us to know how you're managing to work on your challenges. And if there are a lot of things you are joyful for, you also share them with us. And so, um, Let's go to the United Kingdom. Mayoris, if you're there, um, can you come in and tell us um, how is it today? I am good. Good afternoon, everybody. And um, I don't know what time it is at your side. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nigeria and UK have the same, are in the same time zone <laughs> at the moment in terms of uh, it's um, just a little past six o'clock in Nigeria, and I, I know it's the same thing in the UK, but those in the US and Canada, um, most of them are five hours behind us. So my name is Mayores, and um, I've just finished my A-levels, so I did physics, chemistry, maths, and all the math. So hopefully I'm getting my results in um, August, and I hope hoping that they will be really, really good. And I'm planning, I'm currently in the United Kingdom and I'm in Bristol. And I'm hoping to go to uni in Bristol, yeah, to the University of West of England. And, and um, yeah, I think that's it. That's, uh, yeah, I'm planning for studying mechanical engineering. That's what I'm Oh, doing. great. Yes, I was waiting for that, mechanical engineering. So you are one of the... Uh, boarding engineers in the house. Thank you, Mayores, for joining us. Um, it's nice to have you join us from the United Kingdom, from the city of Bristol. Yeah, um, I can see that Omeza, you also arrived early. Omeza, if you're in the house, unmute yourself and tell us where the institution, where you are, the city and the country and what you're studying. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Omeza. I'm um, currently in the United States of America. I'm studying computer science at Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. And yeah, we just finished the 
like I, I joined in the spring. So we just finished the, the spring semester. But right now I, I, because of like, I had like a close relationship with one of my professors. So she offered me a job on campus because I couldn't work off campus until I had spent one year. So right now I'm working with my professor in school at Fisk University, yeah. No, great. Uh, excellent. So um, what kind of work are you are you doing for your professor? Oh, okay. So she she organizes this program for children in the summer, it's like a summer school. So I'm a teacher and I'm also a counselor. So I, I, I'm teaching the kids computer science and I'm also like a counselor. Yes. Fantastic. Excellent. You are already teaching. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice to know that. So, um, has Ikuluwa been able to join us? It looks so. Yes, sir. Hi, everybody. My name is Adrian Watantola, and I attend East Tennessee State University. I am a media and communications major with a minor in criminal justice. And I just finished my first year in college, so I'll be going to my second year. And yes, I've been having a great time here in the United States. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I want to do, but it's been going great. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I'm looking at your, your cheek. It's um, quite robust. Uh, you, <laughs> yeah, you definitely are enjoying the United Kingdom. How much of pizza have you been eating, really? <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> I don't eat pizza. I don't really like it, so I just okay. So it's right. the weather, it's the atmosphere. Okay, but certainly your cheek is uh, much uh, is is significantly, you know, robust, and uh, we'd like to find out what is making it shine so brightly. Yeah, um, we'll get back to you very shortly. Um, who else is in the house? Uh, I can see Otito. Otito, um, yeah, you have joined us. Uh, please unmute yourself and let us know where you have joined us from. Which school? What are you studying? Which city and which state? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Otito, Otito Chukuka. I'm studying polymer engineering uh, with a minor in computer science at the University of Southern Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh, I currently do research in um, two different labs. Um, the first lab is in organic electronics, the application of like conducting polymers to, uh, to electronic devices like phones and photovoltaics. And also my second lab, I do research on how we can use computational simulations to make new, mater new sustainable materials, um, polymeric materials which have applications in various um, forms of industry from sustain sustainable industries, yeah. And I'm kind of enjoying it. I'm enjoying it down here. It's just, it's so hot out here in the deep South. It's so hot and the summer is literally burning, but it's been good. Nice to see you all. Excellent. Um, do you know if what, uh, Kaito managed to come on board? Is, is he with us at this moment or is on his way? I. Thought he should be here. Um, he he's on his way, definitely. He, he's right here, here, right here, guys. Oh, great! Oh, um, Kaito is here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, sir. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kaito Chukuka. Um, me and Otito are twins, so we we both in University of Southern Mississippi. Actually, we're studying the same thing, and um, we yeah, the experience so far has been. It's been it's been an experience, you know. Um, thankful for it, you know. It's had some ups and downs, and um, can't wait to share with you guys like what we've learned and everything. And I'm glad to be to be here and seeing you guys. Fantastic. Uh, so we we'll go to um, Goswell. Goswell, if you're there, um, can you unmute yourself and uh, let's hear where are you? What are you studying? What city and country? Hello, everyone. My name is Godzo Ogder. Uh, I'm in Holland, Michigan, in the United States, and I'm a ma I'm majoring in physics at Hope College. 
uh, right now I'm doing summer research in nuclear physics. I just finished my first year, so going to be a sophomore the next semester. Fantastic. Great to have you join us. Uh, it looks like Mavlos is also in the house. Mavlos, um, where are you? What are you doing? Um, hi, yes, my name is Marvelous. I am, I just finished up my undergrad degree in political science and philosophy. Um, and I'm taking the summer off before heading into graduate school in the fall. So I finished at Hope College, which is where God School is right now. And then I'm going to Georgetown University in Washington, DC to study business management. Um, yeah, and doing a master's there. And right now I'm in Connecticut, just in transition before moving in the next 20 days. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Great. So probably um, we uh, want to start with you. Um, but for Larry, uh, as well as Jeremiah and Demi Lade, as soon as you manage to join us, let us know. So you can unmute yourself and do introductions. Ready. So Marvelous, um, has it been a very profitable uh, endeavor finding yourself in the United States? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been wonderful. I think the past four years have been really good, um, even um, when you factor in like COVID and all of those other things that have been some were somewhat disruptive. Um, but I was able to successfully complete my major in the time that um, most people would complete theirs. And so that was really good. And I've also been able to head into other internship opportunities as well, doing um, spending a semester in New York City and Washington, DC, and also time in Connecticut, exploring different career paths and networking with different individuals. Um, I feel better equipped to move into the real world because of my degree in political science and philosophy. Um, and I'm really excited for the opportunities that opened up to me by virtue of studying in the US, um, especially grad school, being able to study at Georgetown in Washington, DC, which is the nation's capital is, um, you know, something that is not available to everyone. And I'm very lucky to have that opportunity available to me. So yeah, it's been a wonderful experience, 10 out of 10. Great. So what, what are you looking forward to? Um getting from Georgetown? Um, uh, so for me, so I'm going from a grad in political science and philosophy to um, learn more about this. Um, and I think both of those things are really important, especially for someone like me who has interest in doing uh, public policy or advocacy work or coming back to a place like Nigeria and helping to build things from the ground up. Um, at Georgetown, I'm going to be learning um, about some of the best businesses in the world and from professors and uh, CEOs who have, you know, helped build these places from the ground up and seen how they went about building very strong financial institutions, very strong businesses, and even other kinds of organizations. That um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm also, yeah, I, my program is I just about 10 minutes ago, got off the call with some of my classmates and my program is extremely international. On the call, there were six of us um, and I was from Nigeria. One person was from Zimbabwe, but has spent time living in Kenya. Um, we had one person from the Netherlands, had one person from India, had another person from uh, Morocco. And so being able to go into, and one person from Washington, D.C., so America was counted in that. Um, but being able to go into a program that's very, like, globally focused and being able to be surrounded by my mates who are, you know, coming from different backgrounds, have had a whole host of different experiences is going to be something that um, will serve me well as I look towards um, whatever my career kind of turns out to be. I'm hoping to start off in management consulting, and there's very few universities that can help one shoot into a career um, like that other than Georgetown. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Brilliant. Let, let's come to you, um, Otito and um, Kaito. What has it been like so far uh, in the university where you are, especially with respect to the course you're studying? Or what motivated your choice of that course? And are you getting 
what made you um, settle for it? I mean, it's been it's been great in polymer science at USM because USM is like um, top five in the nation in that in that course. And you know, when you see when you go out to the websites and like from Nigeria, you know, read up on like research opportunities and stuff, and then it looks like it's just it's just a, a, a fiction, right? It looks it looks fictional, but when you come here and then you see how accessible. Um, the professors are like you could just knock on their doors and then they'll be ready to chat with you and ready to like get you into their lives, ready to get you onto some work and stuff, and you know, really motivated it, even when you have no experience at all. And so I've, I've been I've been been really having a good time in, in that regard, like being able to come here in my first week. I got into a lab doing um organic electronics trying to work on some polymer blends to see how we can improve solar panels and stuff like that. So it's been really exciting in that regard. I have one of the best teachers like in my intro to polymer course and like that made me like really appreciate polymer engineering because at first I thought it was my, that was one of my mom's major concerns like that polymer engineering is something so niche and why do we want to do something so specific for our bachelor's degree and stuff but you know i've been able to be you know coming here and finding out what polymer engineering is all about it's it's really broad and i don't even know why i ever like doubted being in in, in this course to be honest and um so yeah Otis, fantastic show you that. Tell? um so um studying polymer engineering here has indeed been um really great uh, first, first of all, one thing that has really captivated me is the idea of being part of something, something big, something bigger than yourself, something bigger than just the walls of academia. Like when we when we took the introduction to polymer engineering two, uh, I had this research project and wearable sensors and polymer application to wearable sensors, and I saw like the impact wearable sensors could have for telemedicine and um, telemedicine and even technology technology growing in the future from Apple watches to wearable tattoos and it could help us uh, monitor health, health conditions better. And when I saw that the impact we could have implementing efficient wearable sensors and how polymers could transform that industry, I felt like, okay, I could be part of something really big. And that has been really exciting. The coursework here has been great and the faculty has they have been amazing, like Haito said, opportunities to research. I think that's been a ma major perk above studying in Nigeria is like the opportunity to do things that you would have thought were fictional, but like we've had immense accessibility and I've worked with professors from the best of universities. Like my, my lab is, is one of the leading labs in organic electronics and he, the, the leader, he went to Stanford and he worked with Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. And the second lab, my overall boss, he went to Northwestern, went to Duke. These are really great research institutes. And I've worked with people that went there, people that have been acknowledged by advanced materials, journals and stuff like that. So it's been really great working with these great people. And I think these are opportunities that wouldn't have been possible if I studied back home. Excellent. We return to the United Kingdom. Uh, May I uh, what has it been like for you uh, going through your advanced level program, which obviously will reduce your program to probably your university education to just about three years for you to earn a degree in mechanical engineering. You have spent about two years now going through that, you know, um, focusing on the sciences. Can you share some of your experiences? What, what have your experiences been like? Have you enjoyed every bit of it and uh, contrasting yeah, I... it with where you're coming from? What's the difference? I've enjoyed a lot about it, and um, I, I think we mostly go like in depth, so we have to like have a very good understanding of the topics and what's being tested, and it's because of like the exams that sometimes can be really tough. At first, I think I did struggle on the papers because like I was I was struggling to to apply all the knowledge I knew to actually gather them and then actually use them while like, answering questions. I, I struggle with that. And now I think I'm way better 
better before at like thinking or, or my my uh, what is it the way I think is obvious is better than how I would think before because like an exam questions I try to test myself and sometimes I did struggle with like knowing exactly what to write because I I'm not sure what to write but now I have got an idea I've, I'm like thinking about I've got like something I'm not just completely lost on the paper uh, and um yeah for physics I think th that was really for physics really and for chemistry I think chemistry was quite interesting though because we actually learned of like learned about like applications of um we did polymers I don't we've been talking about polymer engineering and it just clicks to me that I learned a lot about like polymers and chemistry and how they actually join up together wow. to make up um um more useful more useful um sorry more useful um products like nylons and um kepler and some other stuff and i did have quite a lot of photomaths as well because but for for me photomaths was quite a struggle i i, I struggled with it at first but i i did i I did struggle with like follow math at first and trying to learn how to answer questions and just getting it right. And yeah, I think that's it. Excellent. Yeah, uh, it, it looks like um, Enola has been able to join us. Enola, if you are there, can you move, unmute yourself and uh, introduce yourself? Um, in which institution are you? What are you studying? And in which um, city and state are you in the United States of America? Eniola. Hi, my name is Eniola Stoya. I'm a biomedical sciences major at the University of South Florida and in Tampa, Florida. And currently going to my sophomore year now. Nice to meet you all again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like the word again, yeah? <laughs> because we are all here together. Really? So uh, can you tell us a little bit, um, how have you found your program so far? Um, are, you, are you enjoying it or you have regrets moving from Nigeria to the United States of America? Are you in a hurry to return here to go back to where you used to be? <laughs> um, I, I'm enjoying it really. Um, for the first year, we haven't really gotten into like the major, major aspect of the program. But like yeah. right now, we've done like the basics, like general chemistry, biology and um i mean everybody has to do math so but everything has been really good so far and i think the best part of the major right now for me is chemistry which is like very surprising to say because being in high school i never really liked <laughs> i never i mean i liked chemistry but it was challenging for me but here yeah, i think just like the resources that we have been able to like understand the topic in depth like you know how to apply it you know why you're using certain concepts it was it became more understandable. But I really enjoyed chemistry. That I'm even going to be like a chemistry peer leader in the next semester coming. So it's just like I enjoyed it so much. I just want to like teach others and make them see that chemistry is really not all that bad. So fantastic. Um, yeah. So it's been it's been wonderful, and I really like the major. Right now, I don't see myself changing my major, but maybe I would. <laughs> so I'm just keeping it open. But I mean, there are different opportunities there. So, but right now, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, that's great to hear that. Um, we come to you, Misa. How has it been so far? Um, what have you been up to? What are you studying? How have you found it? Okay, so yeah, as I said earlier, I'm a computer science major at Fisk University, and Fisk is a historically black college or university. So, um, coming into Fisk as a computer science major, there were a lot of opportunities because because it's a HBCU. Um, they partner with a lot of companies and other schools, like um, they partner with Google. So in your freshman year, you get taught by a, um, a software engineer from Google. So you really have like the experience you have, um, you have connections with because Google recruiters come because they work, they all work together with the students and they give you opportunities. There are a lot of opportunities. and. Because it's a black school, there are a lot of there are also a lot of Nigerians. So the other Nigerians too, they give us like they give well for me personally, they, they give you this sense of like belonging and like sense of you have to do this. They keep you on your toes so that you're not just relaxing and like that. We also work with other schools like Vanderbilt is also in Nashville. So 
we have some of our courses. You can have some of your courses with Vanderbilt and you, don't, you pay the same thing. So coming to face coming to America just gave me a room of opportunities that I never thought I would have because now Vanderbilt, their tuition is like about like 10 times of the, what I'm paying in Facebook. I can still have that same course in Vanderbilt paying the same money I am in Fisk. And also personally, like what I did to keep myself like in tune with everything, I made sure I was always paying attention in class. I made sure I was I was attentive. I made sure I built relationships with my my professors, even the ones that I might not have built a relationship with. I made sure I was always sitting down in front so that they can always see me. And that's why one of my professors, she she just recommended a job to me, like the job to me. That's how I got my job. And yes, she trusted me. And that's what I've been doing for the past four weeks now. We're entering the fifth week. So I've been teaching computer science to um, five to 12 year olds. I've been teaching them scratch. And yeah, I've been learning also. So yeah, and it's been a fun experience for me getting to know more people, getting to know the culture and everything. And yeah. It's really been nice. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we go to um, we go to Michigan now. Uh, Goswell, can you let us into your world? What, what, how has it been? You know, studying in physics. Uh, it's been a really good experience so far. Like coming to Michigan to Hope College in my first semester was obviously a big transition for me. So like. It took time to adjust to stuff, but then it got a lot better. Like I got used to how things were and like studying physics. I liked physics since I was in Nigeria because of like the math element to it. And it's been quite great to just like understand a lot of stuff that they didn't really teach you too much in Nigeria. So just being exposed to people who have like walked the same path you want to walk, like the physics professors here and like how personal they are and like how much they want to guide you and like teach you stuff. It's really nice to have those kind of things around. So it's definitely a great experience for me to like understand what I want to understand. Like it's been a really good learning experience for me. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Done with your first session now. So uh, it's, it's um, summer. Uh, period for you. What what are you, how are you spending it? I'm currently doing research in physics, nuclear physics to be specific. We're trying to find out where the heavy elements in the universe came from. So I'm working with two professors and like two other students and we're just analyzing a bunch of data because we work with another university, MSU, Michigan State University, and they took data and then they give it to us, like analyze it for them. So that's what I'm currently doing. Great. Uh, Ipolu, I will come to you. What has it been like? My first year was great in terms of experience adapting to the environment and even the style of teaching because when I realized how it was secondary school to how it is now, the teachers are more invested depending on the class size that you choose, it's better. And when you have better relationship with your professors, you get open to other opportunities you might not even have known that there was. And I was a criminal justice major coming in, but then I realized that I was tending towards the media and communications aspect of things. And media and communications is kind of common, but then when you start to study, you see that there are certain niches that, that people are thriving in. But because the fast pace, because the fast pace and trend, it's a fast pace and always changing kind of field. You have to like be updated. What are the best things? How do people thrive on certain platforms? And communications is basically like in every area, in every sector, in every organization. So how do I use this to my advantage? So a lot of people learn media and communication, but how are, how are you going to take that learning to try to implement it to your advantage? So yes, I've just been observing, volunteering, and trying to put myself in this space for more opportunities. Fantastic. Now, um, how do you mention volunteering? 
what's the motivation behind volunteer? What what was what are you driving towards? Um, I realized that the more you volunteer, the more you open up yourself to opportunities because I started volunteering for a um becoming Bucky program in my school. So that's like they were trying to look for a new mascot for the school and i started volunteering towards that and i just started meeting people from the administrative building the communications professors and everything so when i volunteered i could have access to those things so when they're having certain events or they need someone to cover something or they need someone to write on something they can fall back to me because they've seen me at certain programs events and places where you just show up let them know your face put a name to your face and that helps a lot because when they have a name to your face, they know what you do. It's easier for them to communicate with you. And it's not just stopping by anytime you need something, but also like trying to build a relationship with them. So you might not necessarily need anything for them, but it's really good when you just go to their office, say hi, conversations come in, and you go from there. Oh, great. Yeah, um, now that you have mentioned that aspect, you know, uh, community service, you know, leadership. Um, so everything, it doesn't look like everything begins and ends with, with, uh, in, you know, in the classroom. Marvelous, we'll come to you. Um, you. You are done with your undergraduate program. Um, did everything begin and end in the classroom? Oh, no, definitely not. Um, I spent a good amount out of the three years that I was on camp, out of the four years that I did my undergraduate degree, I spent an entire year being literally away from my cam college campus. I spent four-ish months. I spent one semester in um, New York City doing an internship out there and like taking classes like once a week and spending the remaining time working. Um, I spent the, another semester in Washington, D.C., where I would also take classes once a week and then the remaining time was spent um spent that summer in between those two between between New York and DC I spent that summer interning for a law firm or interning with a law department in a private equity company um and so yeah a good amount of my time on campus was not spent one out of four um, which is like 25 percent was not even spent on my college campus and even while I was on in college like on my campus I spent a decent amount of time working I don't think there was a semester of college that I or a week, usually around 15 hours a week that I was working. Um, yeah, so a lot of stuff is happening outside of the classrooms and that doesn't even take into consideration time that's been like volunteering or whatever. So, yeah. So uh, while you were in, in, in Washington, DC, um, you know, doing the kind of study abroad program, what, what, what were you doing? What kind of office were you in? Uh, I was working for, in Washington, D.C., I worked for a senator's office. Um, so senators are people who represent, there are two senators per state that I worked for. One of the senators that represented the state of Michigan, which is where my school, Hope College, um, is located. And so I spent time learning how to respond to constituents when people had questions um, for the senator. Um, myself, along with other members of our team, would go help them figure it out. Um, we also spent a lot of time just doing research about the policies that the senator was hoping to enact at a federal level. Um, yeah, and all those things, it helped bring the political science classes that I was taking back on campus. It helped bring those concepts to life because you can actually see how politics and like institutions of government are moving on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's not just theory or what's in a book. Um, and yeah, I would not change it for the world. I think those experiences have shaped me in very fundamental ways. In New York City, I also I worked at a nonprofit that was focused on engaging with Africans in the diaspora. So it was called the Africa Center. And we, I spent a lot of time learning about community engagement and connecting with the different embassies um, in New York City or yeah, and spent time doing those sort of things. I also spent, um, when I was at the law firm, I spent time reviewing um, legal documents and running audits for the firm that I was at. So yeah, different varying work experiences, all kind of intense in their own different ways and definitely stretched me 
um, but also helped, you know, I thought I was maybe going to go to law school or go pursue a graduate degree in public policy, but because I spent time, even though I was at a law firm, I was working for a financial services company. And that's what allowed me to, you know, eventually make up, make this switch to business management where I'm pursuing my master's program now. So, yeah, could not have learned okay. that. You, you, are, you are a Nigerian. And of course, prior to your departure, you had a bit of insight into uh, an experience and to how, uh, regarding how politics is done in Nigeria. You have seen it from the office of a senator where you uh, interned for, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, are there things you, you have taken away from there which you think um, um, Nigeria can, can learn from? You know, the way we do politics here, the way um, senators especially uh, do their work and on a general note um, in terms of institutions that have been built and which are running to serve the society. Have you noticed any difference? And um, if you have the opportunity to make suggestions, what do you think we need to improve upon? in Nigeria. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I think one of the major things has been um, how accessible leaders are in the United States. You know, in the United States, anyone can. And yes, you might not be able to, you won't be able to speak to the senator directly, but anyone who lives in the state that the senator is serving from is able to get on the phone or hop on their email and send an email, send a message to their senator asking for help in a particular area. That's not the way things are done in Nigeria. You probably have to slip someone, you know, a couple of Naira notes if you really wanted something to be done. Um, no one, those services are, you don't need to pay for those services just by virtue of being, you know, a citizen or someone who lives in the United States, you're able to talk to your leaders um, and express your opinions and get them to actually make up policy that reflects your interests. So those are one of the major differences that I notice. And, you know, if I ever get the opportunity to work beside a senator in Nigeria, like that would be one of the things that I would be pushing forward, where it's like you want people to have easy access to you and it shouldn't be based on who has money or resources. Um, everyone should be able to, yeah, everyone should be able to reach out to their political leaders. Um, Another major difference probably has to do with who the senators employ. You know, a lot of time is spent going, running over um, the impacts of the policies, policies that they're about to implement. And, you know, it's very typical for when senators are debating how to build out a new law that they're considering for them to invite people from industry um or people who are experts from universities or working at think tanks which do research to come look at and to come explain to them why they should do certain things or why they shouldn't do certain things and they take all of those things they take all that information into consideration um and all of those things are publicly available anyone can technically anyone can attend um or at least view those things are live streamed they're documented for the entire public to view that's not really the way we run things in Nigeria. No one really knows how laws get made. You can't really find out who knows what our senators and representatives are doing. I don't even think most people know the names of their representatives. And that's not really how it is in Nigeria. In That's how it is in Nigeria, not how it is in the U.S. Okay. Thanks for that insight. Um, and you know, I will come to you. Um, you. You did very well. I think you finished as the head girl of your school, um, secondary school in Nigeria, prior to the time you know, you you spent with us in preparation for our college in the U, in the U.S. Um, you know, uh, can you give us a bit of insight into if you compare um, instruction you are receiving and how it is delivered by your professors and uh, that the kind the way you were taught while you were in secondary school in Nigeria and what your friends who are studying in the classes in Nigeria are telling you. Do you see any significant difference in with respect to teaching methodology? That's for you, Eniola. Um, yes, um, very much. There's a very big difference. So I know that in secondary school, we're more like we're studying to pass exams, basically. So you're getting all this points, you're getting all these lectures just to make sure you get that A and why get that A in echo. But here it's like <laughs> it's more applied, like it's more an application-based like professors are more um, 
they're more concerned that you understand the concepts because like they are they want to see you make actual changes in society like in biomedical sciences for example you have like research like in the medical field they're trying to make research to to um make disease control measures but back home it's like i really just want to go to the next day i want to go to the surgery level like my friends would just say like i'm tired like, i just want to graduate but here it's like you're even still thinking that, oh what can i what how can i apply this knowledge that i've learned in this chemistry class in this biology class how can i apply it in my career my chosen career and can i even reach out to your professors like i don't really understand this like you can go for office hours i love office hours office hours like a game changer here so you can go to office hours get to know your professors um, understand concepts even deeper but back home it's like they won't advise you maybe because like because i was uni life for like two weeks if they will advise you to not even go to your professors because they know that <laughs> if they know your face it's like they've marked you if you make a mistake you might actually be you know, can fail you like i know who you are i'm going to fail you but here it's like they advise you they encourage you to know your professors you're able to create that relationship with them. So even just having that relationship, you're more comfortable to go meet them, to explain certain topics to you. Apart from that, just knowing them um, opens you up to more opportunities. I like, got so many people I talk to, like they get their jobs, they get internships just from having like relationships with their professors. They get, they're just shown when they see that you have that drive to know more, like beyond just getting that A, beyond just getting that pass mark. Like it just marks you like, okay, you're somebody who's like actually serious and really interested in that program. So that's one major difference, just having that relationship being able to talk to your professors you are going deeper you have all the resources like you have you can go to the library you have almost everything that you need to succeed here so that's like a stark difference between here and Nigeria so yeah yeah but while you're on that um, uh, Igolo, I'll, I'll continue shortly to get um, an insight into something but and, you know, while we're uh, 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 with you um uh, are there times you feel very concerned about somebody shooting you, you know, and then you'll be dead, you know, because here in Nigeria, many parents are worried about, ah, they shoot people in America, everybody is dead. <laughs> yeah. Are you that worried? Um, well, this is, I think it's a two-way thing. Like, sometimes I randomly have it in my head, like, hmm, imagine I'm just, I was just talking, I was telling my sister about this recently. Like, imagine I'm just walking on the road and someone just shoots me. Because I'm just, I just hear news about this every time. Like, someone just shoots me. And because sometimes <laughs> I go to the library, like, in the late hours, like, I'm probably in the library till, like, midnight. So it just be past midnight. And I'm going back to, and I'm going back to my dorm. Like, hmm, imagine somebody actually just, like, snatches me and just takes me. So I just shoots me. But I think I don't have that. I don't think it bothers me. I think it's just like a passing thought in my head sometimes. But like the security is pretty tight, like in most universities. Like in my campus now, I think you just hear rumors about, oh, there was like a public shooting, but you never really see it. Like, cause the security is really good to, a, I mean, to a good extent. I know like, I'm not, I'm not going to like downplay other people who are in, actually in public schools who actually um, go through these troubles of having to see their peers die. I'm not going to say like, downplay that. But still, I don't think it really bothers me as much, like personally, in where I am in college, because I know that they are, like, our safety is really paramount. And I know they say that, but I think they really do mean it. Our safety is paramount. And it's just like a passing thought in my head. Because just going through the news, like you see the news, the different things are happening, which is really sad. But I think at the same time, they don't, they make it like a part of their plan to keep hiking up the security. Like they keep, looking for different ways, like different features that can help to improve the security every single time. So yeah, but the world is just really sad. Like bad things happen, even in Nigeria, bad things happen here, like things happen. So you can't really avoid that sometimes, but it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't give me much anxiety. So yeah. Excellent, okay. Yeah, bad things happen everywhere. And yeah. uh, we are also not aware of any um, student from Nigeria who has been shot even in the last 20 years, you know, working in the streets of America. It's just like when uh, we hear that, um, you know, uh, a bomb went off in, in Yobe, abroad in the US, in, in, in Canada, in the UK, the news will be from the angle of um, uh, the true bomb in Nigeria. They will not say the true bomb in Yobe. And so, Everybody gets the impression that everywhere in Nigeria is, is dangerous. But those of us who live in Lagos, in Abuja, in Potakot, in Oyo, in Abiyokuta, we know that Nigeria is not as dangerous as you know is presented abroad. And the same thing applies to the issue of shooting 
And so one young person goes to secondary school, a high school in America, and he, he shoots. The impression we get in Nigeria is that ah, they're shooting everywhere in, in America. But we know that we, don't, we never hear about Nigerian students who, who die in the US. And most of the news coming out of the US as it concerns Nigerians uh, is pretty you know, positive. Yes, Omis, I, I can see a hand up. Uh, you want to uh, bear your thoughts yeah. on that issue of anxiety. Uh, are, do you, are you worried about, ah, they, they are shooting everywhere in America? We know they are not shooting everywhere in America. Once in a while, those things happen. Mm -hmm. Are you so worried? Amazing. No, um, I just wanted to pitch back on what Eniola said. Yeah, she's right that, yeah, is yes, yeah, there is obviously going to be, or there is obviously, there are times that they have been shootings and everything, but it just depends on how, how they respond and what happens after. Because it's not everywhere, like, Recently, a mass shooting happened. Well, mass shooting, mass shootings basically are shootings with that have at least four lives involved. So, okay, um, in Nashville, there was there was one close to my school, so it's caused a lot of trouble. But the yes, I, yes, it was it was a really bad experience because of it was little children that were involved. But um, what happened after is what really amazed me because of the way. Um, everybody responded because the school initially, the school, the school already had drills for the children to do. So that's why many of the lives were not lost. It was, I don't think it was up to 15. It, it, it was like seven kids and three, three um, faculty that that were lost in the casualty. But the actions that were taken after were actually good because they, they um, even the, the vice president came to my school to talk about what happened and yes, yeah, the the action that we're taking, people from the high school, they came out to protest on gun laws and everything. So there are actually steps that are taken to prevent these things. And yes, it's not really, it's not something that would affect a lot of people, especially students, students. It's, it's, it's really, it's just bad that it happens sometimes, but it's, there are steps that are taken that, that prevent this thing, security and yeah. That's what I would just say. No. Okay. Mm. Excellent. So, uh, uh, Otito, I come to you now. Um, what's the future looking like for you? Are you are you confident that your future is is um, going to give you opportunity to serve, to make a difference, and to do fulfilling work? Yeah, I'm very confident. Like when I spoke earlier, I said. Um, here has given me an idea that I could be part of a bigger picture and do great things because of the numerous amount of opportunities. So basically, I'm polymer engineering major and also a computer science minor. So I look forward to a med uh, like a medley of both fields in in some form of organic electronics going into that field. And there has been lots of opportunities, especially if, um, I think. Omeza, he will understand like computer science is a whole lot of opportunities for computer science majors and even computer science minors um, with internship programs and a, a developmental program. So um, that's really, that that's something to be confident about. You know that you're in school and your efforts in school will be rewarded with like, a, you get a job, you get an internship. And then also with the research I'm doing, research I'm doing um, on wearable sensors and the polymer, uh, uh, the use of polymers and wearable sensors this is an industry I want to go in the future and I see a lot of potential especially in telemedicine because growing up in Nigeria I know my grandma used to go to the hospital and the lines would be so long and she had waist pain so it would be difficult for her but if we have wearable sensors where we can self-monitor your your health with wearable tattoos or the over the over ring, or even more advanced technology than what we call having the Fitbit, then we could really help Medicare and self monitoring of, of diseases. Like in Nigeria, I knew like you never people never really went to the hospitals till they fell, till they fell sick. At least for me personally, and lots of because of that kind of culture, lots of people were unaware of like underlying diseases, or and then they discovered that oh this. This is actually all these little symptoms have actually built up. But if you have like self-monitoring devices, we can be able to, um, without going to the hospital, you can be able to um, check yourself and make sure you're in good health. So that's basically the um, industry I want to go into, wearable sensors, organic electronics. And I think the future is really bright for it. Excellent. Gus, we'll come to you now. Um, 
you you certainly study in a in a school where uh, the population of blacks is uh, uh, relatively you know small um is that of serious concern to you do you feel do you feel inferior because um you know it's, you you study in a white dominated school and is there any reason why you know you feel very concerned about that that's gospel uh yeah hope is a very like white school it's, it was founded by dutch people when they came to america so very dutch place but they also have a lot of they make efforts to diversify the place even though it doesn't really show they still are a very welcoming place like even just as people they're pretty nice people like just walking down the street and you just see someone that you don't know like an old person and they just like always smile at you like every single person you see like and you're just walking past they always smile at you and you just learn to smile back so even though they don't look like you physically like you still feel like the warmth of people like you feel welcome and like you're wanted there so I never really felt that I wasn't like welcome to that place right here and there are also international people from all over the world so and they have like spaces that are, are like designed to breed like diversity and stuff so you can always find a place where you're welcome to and like make friends with people from everywhere okay yeah um Let's talk to Ipulu. What was your own experience in terms of um, issue of discrimination against against blacks? Is that something that is that you are experiencing? Are you losing opportunities because you are from Nigeria? Uh, no, I'm not losing opportunities because I'm from Nigeria. And contrary to the opinion, a lot of people have. Why most times people spend their energy and invest their energy in thinking about, oh, will I be discriminated or oh, race? It's better to let your work speak for you. I feel people already have this preconceived notion. So coming into an atmosphere where, okay, it's a white dominated school, what, what do you have to offer them? Like most times you might think people are mean, people don't want to talk to you, but if you make the first move, you'd be surprised at how friendly some people might be. And racism is always going to be there. Like it has been there for a long time. It's always going to be there. But what are you going to do to like ensure that, okay, even if there's racism, what can I do to show them that it's not because of the color of my skin that I cannot do this. It's not because of the color of my skin that I cannot go places that I cannot present some opportunities. And I had a little issue with my, should I say, accent when I got here. But then I realized that just like every other place, if an American comes to Nigeria, it's also going to be hard for so Nigerians to understand what they're saying. So you just have to learn how to enunciate your words better. Just look at the environment you're in. How can you, what are the best possible things you can do to adapt to that environment? So no racism hasn't been a hindrance to me that much because most times I just let my work speak for me, the things that I can do speak for me, your presence, like how do you even hold yourself? Do you yourself, do you look mean? Are you approachable? Different factors like that. Yeah, okay. Well, let's find out if it's different in the United Kingdom. Um, so, Mayor, can you talk to us regarding that? Um, have you, uh, you know, been in a state of anxiety because you live in, in, a, in a country that is not called Nigeria, it's called United Kingdom? So, at there times you feel, you feel very worried about the fact that um, you are in an environment where most of the people you see are white? not really i think people are quite friendly and really like i feel like people are quite friendly and really open even though they're trying to be mean at the first you could approach them and talk to them be the first person to like make that move and be friendly i'm sure their their mindset will probably change or something like that but i've never really been concerned about my race but for me i think it's really adapting to the culture more so in such a way you're not offending people with what you're doing if you get what I mean because like coming from a different environment certain things might be accepted and certain things might not be like accepted I I wouldn't say it's a it's a race thing I feel it's more like a culture thing for me okay yeah, marvelous can you come in there um you 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 have definitely functioned in environments where 
uh, in the places where you have worked and studied, uh, most of the people are white. What has worked for you? Uh, have you, in a significant way, been, been discriminated against? Um, I would say, I mean, I'm sure it's happened and I'm sure the, yeah, I would say, I think there are definitely times when it's been like, oh, I probably didn't get that because of maybe less so because of race, more so because of my nationality, because of the fact that I'm Nigerian, or at least that's what I would attribute it to. Um, but I just, I've taken the approach of, I'm not really going to let this disturb me, you know, like life is hard and if anything, it motivates me to just apply for more opportunities or to try more things and to still approach people in the way that I would hope that they would approach me. On an, on a balance, most most people that I have met have been extremely kind, um, you know, and very thoughtful and careful in their interactions. And I think, yes, people have moments. I think each one of us has moments where we like, you know, fall short of the way that we ought to treat people. Um, but I also think it's important to respond with grace even in those instances where people maybe are not as kind as possible obviously if you're getting like you know significant like physically harmed or significantly bullied or something like that I think there are steps that you can take to remedy that a lot of times or people that you can talk to whether in your school or positions of work or switching out of you know and I've had to also switch out of hostile significantly hostile environments before but those events, uh, I think in my four years of being here, I've only had to do that about once or twice um, over the course of, you know, four years, going on five years now. So it's not, yeah, if anything, it's just encouraged me to work harder. And that hard work has then brought about more opportunities. So it's not, it's just kind of one of the things that people, you function around. I'm okay. also just this. There's different ways, society is, you know, the world that we live in is, a lot of people experience unfairness for a bunch of different things. I think you can think about like the, there are ways in which I might be disadvantaged because I am disadvantaged because of being black or being from Nigeria and living in the United States. But there's also ways in which that, like I can, I benefit from like being a uh, man. Sorry. Someone uh, hearing my phone. <laughs> I the Alexis going on. <laughs> um, there are also ways in which I benefit from uh, like being a man as opposed to being a woman. Um, and so, you know, leaning into under having, uh, holding those two experiences, knowing that like, oh, so that means like as a guy being more careful of like the way that I talk and approach different things. And when I do have the opportunity to help maybe my female colleagues putting in more effort in the way that I would want someone to be more mindful when they were dealing with me on the issue of race and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, that. yeah, so you have managed to, you know, apply some uh, principles and uh, to navigate your way through um, some of the uh, challenges that are obviously one experiences in a new environment. But um, it's uh, becoming obvious to us that uh, grades, grades are not everything. And Yola talked about that, um, that, you know, in, co in college where she is, um, there is very significant focus on, um, we are not just here to collect grades, we are, we are here to prepare for leadership to be able to solve practical problems in society. Uh, if you were, find yourself in a position where you have to give tips on how to, you know, navigate the waters in terms of developing relationships that you can take advantage of in the future uh, to manage your career well, what general advice would you give to uh, people coming into the United States of America to, to do undergraduate program or to do graduate programs leading to PhD? Uh, well, on a non-academic side, I would say like try, you know, ideally you're saying yes to things more than you're saying no even when you're not sure like a lot of things there's you can't really tell how exactly and it <laughs> you can't tell how exactly this is going to benefit one's career in the long run but like you want to be saying yes to a bunch of different opportunities you want to be exploring taking advantage of what you have you know I think for most of us on this call who are all of us on this call who are studying abroad like we are extremely privileged like we've been given access to something that is not typical for most people um studying honestly 
in Nigeria, but then there's also a significant area of even people in the UK or the US who don't even get the opportunity to go to university. Um, and so recognizing that and make sure, making sure you're taking advantage of all the opportunities that are coming to you, um, I think is super important. And I think Nigerians are really good at this and is what I've noticed. We're very like industrious and scrappy um, and typically say yes to a bunch of different things. Academics wise, you know, making sure that you're going the extra mile um when you know if you can if you're being asked to read you know something once over it's always helpful to go maybe two or three times or at the worst like one time one and a half so maybe you do like a more detailed reading the first time and then you go back and skim over it um socially making sure that your friend group is diverse and you're building out you know I would encourage you to it's good to have a support with other like Africans or other Nigerians but at the same time, you also were surrounded with Nigerians for the first maybe 17, 18 years of your life. So don't hesitate to go meet people from other different parts of the world as well. Um, but also know when like it's important to go back to your base and have people who understand you and maybe can even speak the same language and stuff like that. And so finding that balance is key. Um, keeping your physical health in check is also something that's important. Um, you know, finding a sport. I took up running very recently, which is not, it's, it was not easy, um, but I'm trying, um, or going to the gym, or I know Godswell plays football, so he can tell you a little bit more about that. He's a little bit more engaged in sports than I am. Um, but yeah, those would be some of my tips, and just, just making sure that you have, like, a good attitude towards living, abroad I think it can definitely I think it comes with its own challenges that you know I might not be easily appreciated by both you know the people who are native to wherever the country that you're studying or people who are who are living currently or haven't ever left the countries that you've moved away from um, and so it can be hard being an international student but making sure you're connecting with other international students and talking through some of the struggles that you have and then also finding out opportunities as well as you know a good a good way to approach this journey yeah great that kaito you certainly will have some ideas to share there um what has it been like academically are you faring well so far oh yeah um i feel like the nigerian exposure and like like what um marvelous said how nigerians we we are pretty much industrious and we try to go the extra mile that has really helped you know like putting in way more work than the average uh domestic citizen stuff like that and so coming out tops in our class hasn't really been that hard because you know in nigeria the, i feel like the questions were more like they were more uh how do i put this so so Preparing for an exam in Nigeria was so much draining and all of that. So we know the hacks. We know the we know how to like stay up all night. We know how to to consume a, a large amount of info for a test and all of that. So I mean, I feel like that has helped. And then also like joining it into this approach, the American approach of like trying to find the application of what you're doing, so you get more passionate about doing what you're doing. Like combining both has really helped us like to stand out. I feel. Yeah. And so uh, I'd always, you know, advise to like, I think, I think it was Eniola that said uh, office hours. I might be wrong, but someone yeah. said office hours and yeah, that that's, that's a great place to be. And I think Omeza said like sitting in front in the front row. I, I, I always do that. Me and Otito, like we, we make sure we sit in the front row of every class because there's some questions that people at the back I mean, people at the back are so far that they may not be able to ask some questions. And when you're in front, you can literally like just converse with the teacher while he's teaching and he's he's able to stop and like tell you, you know, give an answer to your question and, and you learn and you move on. And people at the back probably not have that opportunity and stuff. So yeah, sitting in the front row has been really, really helpful. And yeah, just okay. some more to... I know that you and, and Otito uh, graciously are also on, you know, a significant, significant, you know, financial um, help. 
uh, coming from your university and probably other sponsors. Do, do, can you give ideas regarding how people who wish to study in the US and who obviously coming from the kind of country we live in where per capita income is, is below um, um, $4,000. Do you have tips on how people can secure good scholarship? What, what, what did it take for you to get to where you are and be able to um, access um, excellent quality education? Um, even when your, your parents are not Dangote. Okay, yeah, um, it, it took a lot of networking. It took a lot of like researching on the internet, like, you know, joining forums like this, you know, Education USA was really helpful as well. Um, you know, first of all, I think it takes like having a decent SAT score, like putting in the help that Nigerian teachers gives like in the Smart Careers program and going trying to get do your best in the SAT and then obviously searching around for universities that do uh, give merit scholarships and, and stuff like that and then knowing like knowing the jargon in the in the process knowing that some schools care a lot about your SAT score some schools say on paper that they don't care as much and then knowing the difference and then always like always asking questions, going for um, webinars, you know, showing up, writing emails, um, you know, demonstrated interest. And like, yeah, I, th I think that's, that's really it. Like, you know, just going out there, surfing the internet. Cause like most schools would post, would post their scholarship and stuff like that opportunities on, on their websites. Some would not, but so you, you go to their, um, their webinars and then try to make connections. Now LinkedIn is a thing that you could you could do to like reach out to uh, ad admission officers, to reach out to to connect with people that are in that school, to you know get to know the packages and all of that. And um, like like my school has um, has a pretty much robust scholarship pa package right now, where you don't have to do as much in your SAT. Like they literally just dropped the SAT bar like some months ago for the for the incoming class and all of that. But if you if you don't know, perhaps if you don't know someone inside, you may not be privy to that information and all of that. So I'd always say make connections and try and stay as updated as possible, like every time. Oh, great. Uh, do you have um, further tips to give on that? Uh, I believe that the more you research, the better opportunities that you can find. And I feel the researching process is really hectic. It's really tedious. So it's better when you're doing it with a group of people because then you could all bring your different ideas together. You could come together. You could talk about, okay, what she found, what he found, which is the best, the comparisons. So having a community of people that support you is good. Because I remember when I was applying to schools with most of the people here. It's not as if the schools I had were all the schools I applied to. I could tell Enola, oh, Enola found the school, Jeremiah found the school, Omeza found the school. It's like different people. So the more you put your ideas together, the more pool of resources that you can use and try to find the perfect school or the best school to fit what you're really looking for. Okay. All right, Omeza. What's your own take on that? Um, well, yes. Um, as uh, refer as referring to scholarships, even in when you get to school, there are programs that you can go to. There are extensions that you can do that you can get a bit of financial aid. Like, um, and it, do it doesn't matter about your major. Some companies just decide to uh, organize programs, organize extensions for students, so you can do some programs you they'll give you a bit of uh, financial assistance and when like that's for when you've already got into school but for people that are planning to enter school you just need to weigh your options and look for schools that offer financial aid because some schools don't offer financial aid at all so you so you can't be wasting man from where we come from we know that 
you you there's a certain limit to what you can pay actually so you have to look for the schools that offer financial aid and the ones that are actually favorable for you and you can apply to them so most schools yes it, like what i think kato said you, um, it depends on your sat score so as long as you work hard enough because most schools that offer scholarships they give it up because my school person like my school they give scholarships according to your after they've re reviewed your application and let's say your application is good so they want to start giving scholarship they look at your your results what you did in high school your sat so there's a particular set there's a particular group of people that get this this amount of scholarship there's a part so if you get higher in your sat you obviously get the higher scholarship so it just depends on how you go about it and the school you're applying to okay Gosso, can you can we hear from you again um, regarding uh, work work experience? I know almost from the beginning you have you have been working. Um, are there benefits you have derived uh, working while studying, and how much of interference um, does that have um, to do with um, the academic work, or are you able to manage to find a balance? Because we are muted. Uh, working during the summer has been quite the experience because I work for eight hours from like 8.30 to five in the afternoon. And yeah, it's just been quite an experience getting used to because it's like my first actual job where I work like this. So, and doing the physics research has been really good for me because like working with the two professors who have already done what I want to do and like having them guide you and like understanding what it actually takes to be a researcher in the field like it isn't just what you do in the classroom where you just like answer questions and like take tests or something you're actually doing more problem solving than like thinking about the course material or something like you're actually doing real world applications because there isn't like a guidebook where you know the correct answer or the wrong answer because there's basically no correct answer or wrong answer it's like you think about what you're trying to do and like what steps you, what steps you should take to get there and you try it it might fail then you try another one and you think about why it failed then you like try to adjust what you're doing so it like opens your mind up to understand how to solve problems a lot so yeah that's the major takeaway from my research this summer. Okay, great. Um, well, what about the one you you, you did prior to um, getting into your summer work? The job you did was it only the research? Uh, is it only research you have done so far? While um, oh, during the school year, I also your, worked your, um, your freshman year. Uh, uh, like shop where they sell food and I was like preparing the food for their people it was quite an interesting experience also like it was my I picked it up like halfway through my first semester and it was a pretty nice experience working with the people there they were pretty nice and yeah it was you just have to know how much you can handle in terms of picking your hours because they allow you to pick how much hours you want to work so you just have to know how much free time you have and how much you can go to work in to earn money and how much you shouldn't go over it's like still have time for your academics. So I worked for like four hours every week, which was enough for me. And it didn't interfere with my studies too much because I was able to have time for everything I needed to do. So balance, okay. Um, we are getting close to the end of our conversation, but let's go to the United Kingdom again. Um, can you tell us, Mayores, what does the future look like? Um, what ideas do you have? Yeah, for me, I, I, um, I am thinking about doing my degree in mechanical engineering, and I'm thinking about like. You could do like a placement year in addition to your um, undergraduate degree. So I'm planning to do like a placement year. So it would take like four years instead of three years. And I'm also 
looking forward to like working because like I feel like I'm quite in the right environment because there are a lot of like engineering companies in like Bristol as well so I'm just looking forward to like getting my degree maybe doing some work experience and some sometimes I think about going back to Nigeria and maybe starting something like I feel like we maybe like what I think about is about us actually producing a lot of what we use so I sometimes think about that and I think about it and I'm like what can I do in aspect to that regard and like how can I contribute in that aspect oh that's that's fantastic so you do look back at uh, thinking yeah. of the possibility of you yeah. know coming home to help mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, great. The president will be very happy to hear that, yeah. that in spite of the good life you people are, are enjoying abroad, and you still remember your country. Um, marvelous, I know that you have been in leadership right from primary school, and you 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 talk a lot about, um, you know, social responsibility, giving back to society. Are you, uh, is this something that is still on your mind? Uh, do you care about Nigeria and the things, mm -hmm. the myriad of problems we are grappling with? Mm -hmm. Marvelous. Oh, yeah, I'll be back. I don't know. I'm giving myself, so my program allows me to work in the U.S. for three more years. So it's a one-year program. So that would take me to the end of 24. And then I can choose to work in the United States for three more years, if I don't, at the minimum. Um, and yeah, it's definitely something I'm thinking about. And I will be headed back to Nigeria probably sooner rather than later. It is heavy on my mind to come back and you know, help build the country because at the end of the day, it's ours, and we have to take so we have to take responsibility for it. Ideally, the we meaning more people than less. So, um, I'm very excited about coming back to you know help build something, um, like Mayor said, and yeah, just start a company, help run a hospital. Who knows? Whatever, any problem, honestly, any and. A bunch of different problems i will be more than happy to help out in any ways okay yeah, yeah. are there things you remember in nigeria about nigeria something tells you that well there are opportunities there are there some specific you know things about our country that make oh, yeah i mean it's not about the, to come back home yeah one of the major ones i think about is the fact that like by uh the population is just huge so you have just a ton of people first of all and most importantly, you have a ton of young people um, who are available to do, who are capable of doing work. Um, yes, they may not have the opportunity right now because there's there's just not a ton of things for them to do. Um, but once you can put that workforce into, you know, effective and like use, allowing them to make useful contributions to society, which will ultimately help them to feed their families and stuff like that, that is just like, um, you know, economic power that's going to be unleashed on the entire country. And things will, yeah. So I'm very excited about that. Very excited to see the impact of financial technology on the country. One of the things that I've been thinking about recently is, you know, um, people who don't have bank accounts or access to financial services in Nigeria, how to reach out to those people and connect with them and make sure that they're integrated first into the Nigerian financial environment. And then also ideally the more global financial um, environment as well. So we'll we'll see. I'm excited to, you know, go into this master's program, figure out, I'm sure I'll get some new ideas for my degree and then look for other young people, ideally other Nigerians, and maybe even some foreign investors who, you know, want to, who see the value in this and want to go start something, not merely because of like the pot, the, in huge possibility to make money and get like a ton of return on one's investment, but also to do good work that is um, much needed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you are like you, you are on the, um, you know, med part. Um, are you still interested in that? And uh, are you hopeful that uh, someday you want to get back to Nigeria and help to solve some practical problems. So have you found home in the US and you don't want to hear about Nigeria anymore? And you're like, we don't know what's going on with your microphone.
Okay. Um, Enola, we are still struggling with your microphone. Now, can we go to Kaito while Enola tries to sort out the microphone and get back to us? Um, Otito, Otito first. Otito, are you hopeful that someday you you will return to Nigeria and help to make a difference in any way? Yeah, definitely. I'm very hopeful of returning to Nigeria someday. Well, I don't know how close that someday is, but um, I'm definitely very hopeful. Uh, you know, uh, before we left Nigeria, we read this book called uh, The Solution Economy. Kaito and I, we read this book and we found out that individuals in a society can cause change. And definitely that has always been paramount for us to cause change in Nigeria. But right now, like I said, um, the capitalistic nature of America might have affected me when I think of <laughs> when I think of everything and the amount of money being made over here. So I would definitely <laughs> I would definitely be back in Nigeria to cause change, but how soon, I don't really know. But definitely, Nigeria is my country. Uh, when you earlier spoke about um, being a minority here, and personally, although there are lots of nice people here and everything, it's something that has really, like, caught my mind. I never really knew, like, I, I've always known I was Black, but coming down to America, and especially in the Deep South, where racism was really, really much, being black in Mississippi isn't the easiest. So definitely I would love to be back in Nigeria someday, a place your own land, being welcome and causing change over there. But I still feel there's a lot to learn here and there's a lot of opportunities to explore over here for now. Okay. Uh, Kaito, what was it like for you? Um, are you looking back? Oh yeah, definitely one day want to go back, but I feel like Nigeria is like a complex system and so, you have to you have to be well grounded in in your field before you like make it in Nigeria because they could frustrate one and all of that like from what we see it's not easy to just come and make a change in Nigeria you know it's not easy so hopefully let's see but we yes we are inspired but um we just, there's a long way to go before we before we you know, make up our mind, you know, this is what we want to do and this is how we want to do it in Nigeria. And obviously we would have to be prepared mentally for like, you know, perhaps any frustrations by the government and stuff like that. And well, let's see how it goes. Definitely want to one day make our people proud in our country and stuff, yeah. Okay, uh, Eliola, are you able to freeze the microphone now? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, clear. Okay, okay. Um, so right now, I feel like, most of my plans are not set in stone, but I know I still want to go to medical school. And before I go to medical school, I want to get like a master's degree. I'm thinking of epidemiology right now, which has to like disease control and making like working systems to control these diseases. And that plan is like directed to Nigeria. So I still want to like do research to help curb some like disease outbreaks in Nigeria. And just following like the COVID outbreak, that really like is like a I don't know, it's fair, like it's really inspiring me to do like more research in epidemiology. And but still, I still want to get that medical degree. I still want to be a physician. So more of my master's plan, master's degree plan is get towards Nigeria. So, but yeah, I still want to go to Nigeria, do some research. I think it's mostly research I want to do. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Tell us, are you not missing um, egusi soup, um, uh, bitter leaf soup, uh, and mala, and those kinds uh, of things? Are you able to prepare them all the time, or you are comfortable with um, what do you call it, pizza, all the time? <laughs> um, I mean, in school, I sadly I do not cook in school, but hopefully I will start cooking in school. But when I come for like the holiday, like right now, my my older sister's place in Maryland. Uh, we cook a lot of Nigerian dishes, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting that Nigerian feel from the food back. I'm eating all the Amala there by everything. So I really do miss it in school. Like I tell my friends sometimes, like I just feel like it gets so bad. I just feel like chewing like dry gari. Like I just want to eat gari. Like I never want to soak it. I just want to eat it. So it gets that bad. But during the break, I really appreciate like just being able to travel and see family and I get all the Nigerian delicacies. So yeah, I love it. But what was it like for you? Um, are you missing all the um, fantastic dishes you used to prepare with your mom and your younger sister when you were back in Nigeria? 
Yes, I most definitely am missing all those dishes, especially Suya. When last did I eat Suya? Well, I'm missing a lot of them, but the advantage that I have is that my auntie lives here. So during the break, I come back to Texas to stay with her. I like all the Nigerian, all the Nigerian food. She only eats Nigerian food in her house most of the time. So I don't get tired of eating it at the point. So that's the advantage I have. But in school, it's sometimes I don't even eat because I don't want anything. Like I don't want a sandwich. I don't want a wrap. But I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. And hopefully next semester, I'll start cooking in my dorm and everything so I can still have that feel at home. Mayor Rice, yeah, in the United Kingdom, um, what's it like for you? Um, what are some of the things you remember and you say, well, I'm missing Nigeria. I wish I can go back home tomorrow. It's yeah, food, yeah, one of those like, things. I think there's sometimes I talk about like food with my sister and like especially yeah if he needs that like sweet yeah it's like how do you get it <laughs> <laughs> or kill she how do you get it? but like I I eat a lot of like Nigerian dishes still but like Amala because I'm at home I'm not in and I I might I'm just going to stay at home for uni so it's not really going to be a major difference. But still, I feel there's still some things like I feel like the pounded yam here is not still the same like the one that we like the best yeah. in Nigeria. It's still different, but still, but yeah. Okay. All right, Omiza, what is it like for you? Um, are you able to eat uh, whatever you want to eat, um, especially in Nigerian dishes? Well, well, kind of because there's there's an African store in Nashville, so. I can prepare food, I can prepare Nigerian food, and there are a lot of Nigerians who people bring food, people bring food from their, like, maybe their auntie, they will go to their auntie's house, bring back soup and everything. So, and even in church too, there's puff puff sometimes, there's jollof rice sometimes, because in school, like, there's nothing, the only, the, there's only like limited selection that I like in school. Even though I eat everything, it's not everything that is that good. But from school, from church, from the African store, especially, so we have a lot of Nigerian food. There's even no more Nigerian Indomie back here because everybody likes Indomie. So we have to we take that one. There's the everything is like is is because of the African. The African store is also helpful. So I didn't really feel. I don't really feel that I, like the food is right here, so I'm I'm actually good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Rounding off now, uh, Mamelos, can you um, tell us some parents who hear about study abroad and they want to consider giving their children opportunities to, to study abroad? Sometimes they worry about uh, what they hear from you know uh, rumors that you know, coming from their friends and some other sources about, ah, when, you know, young people go to America, they forget their families, they, um, they don't think about their parents anymore, they don't even remember they have siblings and they just disappear uh, with their friends in America and that's, they have lost them. Yeah, those fears, uh, do you think um, they are grounded in, in evidence? Because I can see all of you, we had, the privilege to have, you know, worked with you to ensure you, you got into the kind of places you are in, in the US. And um, we have this interaction with you and the way you're standing and what I hear from your parents is that you're all looking back and you're doing well. So um, is, is this fear about young people getting into America and they are Nigerians, they forget home. Is it grounded in evidence in the light of the people in your own network? No, I mean, even just listening to the call, you can hear a bunch of different people talking about like, oh, yeah, when I go to the church and the, to stay with my auntie who is Nigerian and this is this, like, no, that doesn't happen. I don't, I mean, I'm sure there are like, you know, a small, a tiny percentage of people for who that is true. And that is the case. But that probably also happens in Nigeria as well. There are probably people who move from one state to another and then like completely cut off connection so I don't think that's a good reason to not go study in the United States um I think yeah I think most most people tend to look back most people stay in touch with stay in, most people do stay in touch with their families most people don't get 
it's in fact i would say that for nigerians in general instead of being like carried away most people tend to you know be at the top of their class and have like really large ambitions about continuing to go to school and you can hear people on this call wanting to go get a master's or a phd or go to medical school nigerians tend to be very ambitious especially academically um and so I think if anything, it's not, it's an opportunity to, you know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to make one's life and possibly the life of family members back in Nigeria better. And, you know, in, at least in, in my opinion, you know, I'm working not just for like my family or my brother or whatever, but also for like Nigeria in general. Um, and if you have an opportunity to send your kids to the United States so they can go get educated and then, um, you know, benefit the United States, maybe even benefit Nigeria. Like you have to take that shot. You have to lean into that and things will be fine. And there's no need to be afraid because people, like I think someone said that on the call, like bad things happen everywhere. Good things happen everywhere. Um, in terms of academics and stuff like that, I think a lot more good things are happening academically in the United States than in America. So why would you not then in the United States of America than in Nigeria? So then why would you take the opportunity and send your child to get educated? Would be my thought. Okay. All right. So everyone, uh, one sentence, maximum two. I'm talking to um, the school system in Nigeria in terms of what needs to be improved upon. Uh, and of course, talking to parents in terms of the need probably to um, give their children opportunity uh, to get good quality education in the United States of America. What, what would you be advising uh, if you meet the average teacher today in the light of your experience in the US, Omiza? What would you be telling the average teacher in Nigeria regarding how to teach? Um, well, they should be more intentional about like their students. It should, not, it should always be about their students, not just one particular student. They should know how to pass their information across. It should not just all be about um, about memorize, like because most of the teachers, the way they teach, they just expect their students to cram and put it in the examination. It should be more of explanations because most most teachers just use notes, notes, just write down the notes. Maybe they were explaining a bit and the rest is just left for the students, but they should be more intentional about their approach. They should make it more like they should have, make it in, they should even not only teachers, the school system, because I, I went to Unilag, I was also in university in Unilag, so I know it, um, they should make it, most students can't like get their materials easily. They can't um, talk to their professors easily because the class size is not even, is not encouraging sometimes people won't pay attention and the professors don't have that one-on-one -on -one, um one-on-one -on -one relationship with their students so i'm just generally you should make the system so so that the students can have more more access to what they are learning they can learn better they can do more projects because that's the thing that nigeria is lacking in a lot they just this is mostly theory, mostly theory. So okay. when they practice more, that that's going to is going to be better. When they practice more, when they do more practicals, like now people doing engineering in Unilag, we well, because I was doing engineering in Unilag, we don't even have access to to all the facilities. We just, it's just practical, like. Even my friend was telling me, my friend is in Babcock, and I'll end with this. My friend is in Babcock. He's studying computer science also. He tells me that when they are doing their exams, they code on paper, like they write down the code on paper. So things like this should not be, it should be, there should be more improvement and more so that the students can learn more from what's uh, about what they are doing. Okay. Daniela, talking to teachers and maybe parents. In terms of um, should they give their children opportunity to study in the US? What do you think? Um, so I mean, in the meantime, like being in Nigeria, I think everybody should like the teachers, students should make the best use of the resources they have available to them at the moment. So, like for example, the teachers you have like this lesson notes, like how can you use those resources that you have to really create lesson plans that are really like applicable 
to like real life situations, like just making optimal use of those resources because you really have what you only have what you have available to you. So make the best use of those resources. And in the light of like studying abroad, like at the same time, just the resources you have available to you, reach out for more, like keep asking for more, know how to ask for opportunities, reach out for opportunities. And yeah, I think it's very, it's indeed a privilege like being able to study abroad. So if you have that opportunity, giving your children the opportunity is really, I think it's a blessing. And if they're able to use the resources they have right now in Nigeria to the best use, they will obviously make the best use of the resources that are here and get even greater results. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Kossil, how will you look at it? Talking to, to, to teachers in Nigeria and then um, parents who, who have opportunity to send their children abroad for studies. Uh, for the teachers, I would say they should focus less on just telling students to memorize stuff and actually try to help them understand why stuff is the way it is. Because like coming, studying physics, obviously it's about understanding the world and the universe around us and like the laws of nature. And like a lot of times when people teach that in Nigeria, it's just, yeah, these are the laws. And like, why are these laws this way? They don't really tell us. They're just like, yeah, just study this and like answer this question. But like here, you're able to understand where those laws come from, and like why all these equations make sense. And I'll think, I think that's much more, much more important than like just understanding what those laws are. Because in the real world, like in the research I'm doing right now, you don't just need to know what the laws are because even like question those laws as you're doing the research. So it's like, why the why are these things the way they are? So that's what I would say is pretty important. Okay. For parents who have the opportunity to send their children abroad, is it a good investment? I would think so, yes, a very good investment. Why do you think so? Teaching style is just much more efficient and like you understand as i was saying before you understand why things are the way they are not just what they are so you're able to like develop critical thinking skills and understand always learn to ask questions about stuff that happens uh may rice what do you think if you have the opportunity to talk to teachers in nigeria regarding how to teach and um, parents who have opportunity to send their children abroad is it good investment I think sending your child abroad is a, a good investment. I I think it depends on the child if they know what they want to do and what they want to achieve at the end of the day. Because if you obviously send someone who doesn't really know what they want from going abroad or they don't know what their aim or goal is, actually, you obviously you will or maybe look for other ways to make ends meet or maybe actually diversify from what you like actually initially planned for them and for teachers I I feel first you need to, we don't really do a lot of like work experience because like my sister's going to school and then she's talking about how she she had to like find a work experience and she's like in year nine and I feel like I never really got the opportunity to explore like different ranges of career before I actually made a choice choosing what I wanted. And I think that's quite interesting as well. And I, I think um, also supporting your student, like Omeza said, the one-to-one -one relationship, just knowing that you could actually talk to your teachers when you're struggling. And if you're not finding things right, you can actually go to them and you're not feeling weird or strange or, um, because there's that relationship between um, um your teachers and one thing I think one of the major things I find interesting as well is actually we never really talked about socializing or relaxing in like in a Nigerian school setting you're always focused on oh I want to get that grade just pull all your efforts they always tell you work hard you like succeed but we never really talk about relaxing as well because I actually find that that's really important as well because like at the end of the day, you don't want to use up all your energy to hear things that you find it really hard to even concentrate or even move forward because I feel like that's like really important and I feel like we don't really talk about that as well. Okay. Kaito, 
talking to teachers in Nigeria and parents who have the opportunity to send their children abroad. What would you want, what changes would you want to see? And is it good investment sending children abroad, especially uh, United States, America, Canada, and United Kingdom? Kaito. Um, in one sense, to, my, to the teachers, I'll tell them, come to your class, come to your class prepared so you wouldn't be scared of the curious student. Because a lot of times, Nigerian teachers are like, they don't really want that, they don't like that kid that likes asking questions. Why? Because they're not as prepared, they're not grounded in, in their uh, course material and all of that. And, you know, and curiosity drives innovation and curiosity drives invention and all of that. So, and then talking to the parents, I would say, yes, uh, sending your children abroad, it's, it's an experience that is an experience of a lifetime. First, it gives them exposure to a new culture, a new way of thinking. And then secondly, it takes them away from the, the just the fact that Nigeria is a, is a, is a developing country and it's been, it's been a developing country for a very long time. It shows the system in Nigeria is not really working. So we need to see something else that is working and all of that. So yeah, and then the, the system here, especially in America is, um, the system here encourages people that are motivated and that's that's really what you want for your for your child you know let him grow in the field that he likes and let it be opportunities for him so yeah okay what you talk? talking so, to teachers and is it good investment for parents to make sending their children abroad what kind of place you are talking to teachers i'll let them know incorporate the big picture in whatever you teach it when students understand the bigger picture of what they do, it helps drive passion. They become more passionate about whatever subject matter it is. If they know the bigger picture, this, whatever they're learning plays in, in, in real world applications. Um, to parents, I think it's a, it's a good decision to bring your kids uh, over to the United States, the United Kingdom or Canada to study because uh, here you have cutting edge technology and I feel like having this exposure to cutting edge technology and innovation is the only way we Nigerian youths can cause change in the future. The world is growing fast and Nigeria is way behind. And if you come, when, when you come out here, you, you begin to see what is going on technologically. And when we have more students coming to school here with the vision of coming back, then we are able to create technologies in Nigeria that can compete. But what we have in Nigeria right now, your know, Unilag, we, I was in Unilag for two weeks. So experience, I did expect uh, just like see how it was, try and see how it was there at Unilag. And the the labs, the labs were dusty, cobwebs, you don't even go in. You don't even go in. Um, you're, you, you basically no ex experiment really done. You're a theoretical engineer, and that's nobody wants that. So the exposure to be able to work with technologies that are cutting edge here abroad is good if we want Nigerian youth that can lead the future. All right, um, Omeza. Uh, sorry, um, Ikuelua. Talking to talking to teachers in Nigeria, and is it uh, a good investment for parents to make sending their children to where you are? Um, talking to teachers in Nigeria, first of all, that's a, like, a very big well done to what they have done with the resources that they have. But at the same time, I'd like them to know that they are literally bringing up a child because children are in their developmental stages. So the attitude that they give those children, what they teach those children is going to be a great part of how they are formed. So most times I would like to tell teachers that any passions that these children have, any interest that they pick up, it shouldn't be undermined because we have seen people in different fields striving in those different fields. So don't undermine the passions of your of your students. And at the same time, just maybe do with what you have to give them the best quality experience that they could have. Because we all know Nigeria is facing a hard time, but people are trying, people are making a difference. So always let them know they can do great things because the people that have done great things, they were kids too. They had teachers too. So just put in them that consciousness. Yeah. And also to parents, I'd like to say, if you can send your child abroad, please do it because Nigeria is a developing country. Send them abroad, let them gather the skills, let them gather the knowledge, let them talk with people of 
like minds that want to do what they want to do too and they also have those resources to do it and yes it might be difficult sending them abroad but that's why we have scholarships that's why we have different avenues that are used to send students abroad so if you're invested in your child like I remember when I wanted to go abroad both my parents were really invested at a point even when I was losing faith I was like you don't have money and you are still pursuing me like you still have that much faith in me more than I have in myself. So I feel when you send them abroad, they would have that consciousness of where they're coming from. Because the thing my mom used to me was that, never forget where you're from, never forget your core values. So those worries of your child, okay, going astray, doing this, I feel when you have trust in your child, you know your child is going to be there for a reason, they know what they're going for. So if you have the money to send your kids abroad, send them abroad, let them acquire the skills and they want to come back to develop the country, let them do just that because Developing Nigeria starts from little steps. It starts from people that want to take the initiative to do that. Great. Uh, marvelous talking to teachers. Is it great investment for, for parents to make, sending their children uh, to the kind of environment you are studying in? Yeah, 100%. Um, and yeah, I think the teachers should, honestly, if anything, they should take joy in the fact that a lot of, you know, at least in terms of academic rigor, the level to which they push a lot of us Nigerian students, you know, helps us succeed and do very well in the United States. I think there are a couple of things that are, you know, sometimes missing out, especially when it comes to career. But I think there's also a place to, you know, for some form of thank you to be said for, you know, enabling us to go as far as we go, even when we arrive in the United States. I think that's important to acknowledge too. Um, but then also at the same time holding space for, you know, like Nigerians are good with like the rigorous aspect of things. Maybe we've not been as good with the career aspect. So we're encouraging, you know, my generation of students to go abroad and then bring um, back lessons to the country that might um, not otherwise be available. So a good mix of thank you for the good work that you're doing, but um, it's also time for us to go and learn from other people as well, would be my message. Excellent. Um, thank you, um, all of you, for um, remaining on the path that we agreed on when you left Nigeria. And, and thank you to your parents for trusting us um, with um, the platform we now have to be able to contribute to the development of your career. I, I'm very um, um, grateful to God for the opportunity to have had to work with you. And also very delighted to learn all the time that you guys are flourishing. Virtually all of you are on first class part and uh, everywhere you go, you are known for good and not for, for bad things. And you are, you are really excelling. And so uh, we want to thank you for not forgetting that you are coming from family is back home, you remember your parents and your parents um, continue to pray for you and we have continued to work with them and we will continue to work with them to support you as you study in the US. And I'm glad that um, uh, virtually all of you are looking forward to a time when you will use that which you are already gathering in the US, in UK, in Canada, uh, to come back home to make a, a huge difference, help to accelerate development in, in Nigeria. And that's something for which I, I give all of you up. Thank you very much for remaining faithful to the dream. And for parents who, uh, who have um, been supporting you, I want to say a very big thank you for uh, all the sacrifices you're making to ensure that your children are excelling abroad. Um, sometimes these things uh, involve investment. I know that most of you uh, have been able to get into where you are because your parents trusted us to work with you. Do your SAT, do your TOEFL, do your IELTS, do your applications. And of course, um, sometimes you work with us late into the evenings and they still made effort to come and pick you up. And now you are, are doing what you're doing and everybody is happy. Um, so. Uh, the pains have come, now the gains are there, and we are all um, happy and thankful to you for um, ensuring that um, we are not disappointed and uh, that your parents are also not um, having any reason to wonder why they had to make the investment. And I know that many parents 
are talking to us now and trying to find out what they can do to send their children abroad. So um, there are opportunities um, in the advanced societies in, in the UK, in Canada, in the United States of America. We also have opportunities in other parts of Europe uh, where even if you don't have a lot of money, you are not a multimillionaire, you'll be able to send your children to school. So it doesn't take being a millionaire all the time for you to send your children abroad. So if the child has done well in school, I just uh, speak with me and we'll be able to um, start with a career uh, management um, uh, session that will help us determine what the child needs to study and then give appropriate advice on the roads, roads we need to trade uh, to be able to get to schools that you can afford. So virtually everyone can study abroad if you um, find the humility to speak with us and we'll be glad to help. Uh, money is not written, so even if you don't have money, still feel free to talk with me. Uh, this is my own calling. I'm Dr. Peter Bidro. It has been my pleasure uh, interacting with these young people who are studying in the UK, uh, in Canada, and in the United States of America. I thank you for joining us to um, interact with these young people and helping to keep them focused on the dreams that took them abroad and helping them to remember that they come from families and the country that needs what they are learning abroad, you know, very desperately. So on that note, um, thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope to do this again. Um, there's a project we have that will enable us to um, get you involved in serving Nigerians um, who have their children in diaspora and are worried about how they can help them to remain you know, connected to, to, to Nigerian culture without necessarily having to bring them to Nigeria. Uh, so we would do in Germany, we would do in Canada, we would do in the United Kingdom, we do in the United States of America. So um, hopefully summer of next year, We'll have reason to um, invite you to Washington DC, to New York, um, to London, uh, to Toronto, to Berlin, to Paris. And uh, we'll be working with parents who are Nigerians and, and Africans and who are desirous of ensuring that their children do not lose track of where they're coming from. Because in spite of our uh, enormous challenges as a country, uh, we know that there are certain things that are also working well for us. We have got population. We only need to empower that population. And those of you studying abroad who have opportunities to come back home and make a difference and use their talents uh, to impact on the lives of you know, millions who are waiting for you to come and um, change things here. So on that note, um, enjoy um, the rest of your day. And thank you once again for joining us. <laughs>